There are a number of things that must be adjusted properly on your carburetor in order for your motorcycle to run well. Each of these things works in conjunction with each other, but in order for a proper air and fuel mixture, you must have fuel first. Today on MC Garage, we talk about the carburetor float. Last week, we ran through all the bases of a carburetor, touching quickly on what everything does. If you haven't watched that video yet, stop right here and go back to that video. It'll help with the entire picture of what's what. In the simplest of terms, the carburetor just has one function, mixing air and fuel in the proper ratio. And to do that, you're gonna need fuel. Fuel is delivered to the carburetor circuits via the float bowl. It's a pretty simple system, but if it's not right, it's gonna mess with everything. How it works is fuel enters the float bowl through the fuel inlet fitting. From there, it flows through a needle valve and that valve is then actuated by the float itself. When fuel level is insufficient, like when you're using fuel or the float bowl is empty after sitting for a while, the float hangs down and opens that valve. When the level reaches full, the valve closes. It's a super simple system, but sometimes there are things that can go wrong. First, there's the issue of a stuck needle valve. Sometimes this needle can get stuck when there's a piece of crud or something else holding it open, or if it's not sliding smoothly. When this happens, fuel will continue to flow and overfill the bowl. When this happens, the fuel falls out of this tube and onto the ground. A quick fix is to tap the side of the bowl with something like a screwdriver handle to shake it loose. If that doesn't remedy the situation, you're gonna have to take it apart, which you should do anyways once this thing is sticking. The next issue is the needle might actually be worn out, also leading to overflowing and improper metering. So when you pull this needle out, the sealing surface right here should be totally smooth. Run your fingernail down that needle. If there's a ridge, it's toast. Replace the seat as the same time as the needle because they usually come in a set at about 15 to 20 bucks. Once you know the needle valve is good, you need to make sure the float is working properly. First thing to do, make sure the float, well, that it floats. Do this in gasoline as it has a different specific gravity than water or some other fluid. After that, just make sure the float moves freely and doesn't bind up. Once those checks are complete, it's time to move on to checking the level. To check the level, you're gonna need the proper spec from your service manual. This measurement will be the point which the float just closes the needle valve. You can use a clear external tube attached to the overflow that can show you the level, but that's a pain. You've already got the float bowl off, might as well measure it manually. You're gonna to wanna to measure the height just as the float touches the needle. The easiest way to do this is lean it at about a 45 degree angle and watch as the little metal tab touches the spring-loaded pin on the needle. That's gonna be your level. If you do it straight up and down, you're gonna to have too much weight pushing down the needle and you're gonna get an incorrect reading. Now, if you need to move this because your height is incorrect, all you need to do is bend this little tab a slight amount to either raise or lower this float. That's it. Once you have the float height correct, you can move on to the next step the idle circuit, which we're gonna cover next time on MC Garage. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and put them down below. If you like what we're doing, hit that like button, subscribe, and share wherever you can. We'll see you next time.